I know some people are gonna be mad or confused why I'm comparing the 3090 with the 4070 Ti. Well, why am I doing that? Well, a 3090 costs like, you know, over $1,300. Its MSRP was $1,500. The 4070 Ti, uh, you know, actually cost, if you type it in correctly, uh, around $800 and it's available new at that price or a little bit uh, over that. But why would I compare these if they cost different amounts? Well, on the used market, you can find them for about the same price. In other words, a used 3090 is selling for around the same price as a new 4070 Ti. And I've seen some people commenting on my videos, why would I buy a new 4070 Ti if I could buy a used 3090 for about the same price? So I thought, you know what? Let's actually do a detailed head-to-head -head comparison. Now I'm seeing these sold listings at Jawa.gg, uh, Jawa.gg, which is today's sponsor. Jawa.gg is a place for people to buy and sell computer hardware. And this is a great way for you to take advantage of the high prices of GPUs right now, which is to buy a new one, it's expensive, but if you have an old one to sell, you can make up a huge amount of that price pricing difference. Now, you can actually sell your GPU on Jawa.gg in two different ways. You could list your card for sale yourself, where you create your own listing and your price and somebody buys it and you ship out the card and all that. But another option is to sell directly to Jawa.gg. Uh, you tell them your GPU model and condition, they give you a price within 24 hours, you ship it to Jawa, and then they actually inspect it while that do the sale. Now, why would you sell on Jawa instead of something like you know eBay or something like that? Well, uh, like eBay, they have have good seller protections, uh, good fraud protection, all of that. But unlike eBay, they don't take as much of your money. Um, they have some of the lowest fees on the market, so you get to keep more of your money. They're also very gamer-friendly, focused on gaming PC parts, I think a little bit of consoles, that kind of thing. Anyway, so check out the link in the um, description and the pinned comment to sell your GPU on jawa.gg. Let's do all of our detailed comparisons, and I'll give you some final thoughts at the end. Let's begin our testing with Unreal Engine 5. Now, right now, the only full game we can do that in is Fortnite, because Epic, who develops Fortnite, also develops Unreal Engine. So this is the first game featuring the new features like Lumen and Nanite. Lumen's a new software-based ray-traced lighting system, which looks excellent. Although it does have a hardware acceleration option, which in this test I have turned on. We'll try it with it off as well. Uh, the hardware accelerated version gives you a little more accuracy, but does take a bit more of a performance hit. Now at 1440p with the Epic, so that's a maxed out preset with hardware RT turned on, the 4070 Ti is winning by about 5%, so it's basically a tie, and we can see that the average frame rate is close to 60, but a little bit below. You can also check the current frame rates and 1% lows, um, and you can see those labeled for you in the top left corner there uh, throughout the benchmark runs. Now, since both of them were a little bit below 60 FPS, which is not ideal, I thought we'd try turning the hardware ray tracing off. So this still has Lumen enabled at its epic settings, um, but it just turned off the hardware acceleration, so it's slightly less accurate. Uh, we now see the 4070 Ti winning by about 6% by the end of the benchmark run, and both GPUs are spending more time above 60 FPS than they did before, although if you compare these frame rates versus the ones that we saw uh, with hardware RT on, there's not a massive performance difference. So other Unreal Engine 5 games may use more demanding ray trace settings, but these ones aren't too crazy, although the overall performance here is, like I said, only a little over 60 FPS at 1440p max settings. Now, if we drop these settings down to high, uh, this is the high preset overall, and have the hardware accelerated ray tracing turned off, we can actually see that both of these GPUs are able to deliver a much higher refresh rate experience. Uh, not crazy high. I understand if people were actually playing Fortnite, you'd probably turn the settings down lower than this to be more competitive, but right now we're not really using this to test Fortnite. We're using this to test Unreal Engine 5 performance. We're seeing the 4070 Ti about 7% faster at these settings, so maybe the uh, lower memory bandwidth or whatever uh, is just slightly more favorable. But really, it's, it's not that big of a difference, and um, averages closer to the 90 FPS range on both of them. Now, if we wanna step up to 4K, we see a couple of interesting things. First of all, if we try it completely maxed out, this is the Epic settings with the hardware accelerated uh, ray tracing turned on, we see both GPUs in the mid 30 FPS range, and we also see them exactly tied in their average result by the end of this benchmark run, which I thought was extremely interesting. 
because we did see a bit of a lead for the 4070 Ti in the 1440p results. So it does look like we're seeing that at 4K, the 3090 performs, um, you know, relatively to the 4070 Ti, it catches up a little bit. However, I was curious if that would also um, be the case if we use some upscaling. So we're leaving everything at 4K max settings, other than we're turning on some upscaling. Now, I believe that DLSS has been added back into Fortnite now as of the time of filming, but I recorded these benchmark runs before they had added DLSS into this build of the game. So I'm using TSR upscaling, Temporal Super Resolution, which is an Unreal Engine 5 uh, upscaler. So this is at the quality setting, which renders it at 1440p and then upscales to a 4K-like image. It's similar to DLSS quality. Here we can see neither GPU giving us 60 FPS. They're close, but we also see the 4070 Ti back to that 5% lead. So here I tried out going back to native 4K resolution, but this time let's turn down the settings and see where that gets us. So first I dropped to the high preset and I turned off the hardware accelerated ray tracing. So it still has Lumen enabled at the high setting, not Epic, um, but it is not hardware accelerated anymore. Now here we're seeing them tied again. So even though the settings are reduced, being at that 4K resolution does seem to be bringing the 3090 into the uh, into the tie. Now overall, both GPUs are only averaging a little bit above 50 FPS which, you know, if this was a single player Unreal Engine 5 game at 4K, you know, might be fine on a variable refresh rate screen. But I thought, uh, let's see what we could do if we also upscaled. So once again, since I didn't have DLSS quality available, I used TSR quality, uh, which again renders the game at 1440p if you're uh, to output a 4K-like um, image. And again, this is with the high settings with hardware RT off. This brings both GPUs to an over 80 FPS average, and the 4070 Ti is at a 6% lead overall again. So it looks like that at lower resolutions, the 4070 Ti is faster than the 3090, but at a native 4K resolution, they're exactly tied, at least in this particular game. So I was interested in the 1080p results. I was like, okay, if we lower the resolution even further, will the 4070 Ti pull even further ahead? And actually we did see that. By dropping to 1080p epic preset with hardware RT on, so it's completely maxed out 1080p, we now see the 4070 Ti with a 10% lead, and it's averaging over 80 FPS, while the 3090 is averaging in the mid 70 FPS range. So it does actually have a, a bit of a noticeable difference here. Now obviously these GPUs, most most people wouldn't be targeting a 1080p build with it, but there are some competitive FPS players out there who actually do still have 1080p monitors just at extremely high refresh rates um, and have high-end GPUs um, going along with that. Now, before we leave 1080p behind, I was also curious about the difference between hardware RT on versus hardware RT off to look at the generational difference between the GPUs. So this is now 1080p epic settings like before, except I've turned off the hardware accelerated part of the Lumen ray tracing. And now we see the 4070 Ti with a 9% lead. And, you know, it was 10% with hardware RT on. So I'm not going to get too hung up on, you know, the 3090 caught up slightly by 1%. Guys, it's, it's margin of error anyway. Um, so in other words, I didn't see a massive difference there. Let's go ahead and jump to a different game. This is a Plague Tale Requiem at the 1440p Ultra settings. We see both GPUs delivering over 90 FPS during this cutscene, although we'll see it drop below that uh, when we get into actual gameplay. And now the 47 Ti only has a 2% lead at 1440p, so it looks like this game engine um, is less favor favorable to the new architecture, although it's not a massive difference, it's pretty comparable. Uh, Plague Tale Requiem is one of the best looking games I've seen, and you know, not every next gen game is going to be stressing, uh, you know, is going to be using Unreal Engine 5. So, this is an in house engine by this developer, but this is another game that's targeted at just the current gen consoles. It's not trying to be cross compatible back to Xbox. Uh, one or PlayStation 4. So this is a stressful, demanding new game. 
And we can see that when we try to run it at 4K Ultra, we see a couple of interesting things. One is that neither GPU can deliver a 60 FPS. We have the 3090 closer to um, a 50 average, but when in this actual gameplay scene, they're both down in the mid to low 40s. And now the 4070 Ti is actually slower than 3090, uh, delivering only 96% of the performance of the 3090. And again, we're seeing that theme where at 4K, the 3090 is a little better relative to, uh, to its 1440p performance. And this game does have DLSS, so turning on DLSS quality, which again actually renders the game at 1440p, and then upscales to 4K, we now see them exactly tied. Um, so matching performance uh, at these settings. And they're also both over 60 FPS now in the mid 60s in this actual gameplay scene. In more demanding areas of the game, you could still dip below 60 FPS, but you can see both of them can deliver a good upscaled 4K result. Now, Plague Tale Requiem is one of the few games that does feature DLSS 3 frame generation, which the 30 series can't use, but the 40 series can. So notice that this is actually comparing the 4070 Ti versus itself, DLSS quality versus DLSS quality plus DLSS 3 frame generation. But be aware as I'm, you know, read my box on the screen here, and I have a whole separate video on this topic, that frame generation increases the motion fluidity by adding in generated frames but those frames might not look as good as real frames, and they also don't improve the game's responsiveness. So they're not really an apples to apples. When you, when you look at you know, 90 FPS with frame generation versus 90 FPS without frame generation, they're really just not the same thing. So I don't like to you know, compare them directly, but it is a cool feature that I actually really like in this game. Um, don't get me wrong about that. Watch my full video on the topic. I did also test out 1080p, and we once again see the 4070 Ti um, gaining performance relatively. We're at 104% of the performance of the 3090 at the 1080p ultra settings, and both GPUs are delivering well over 100 FPS most of the time in the game at 1080p. So again, I understand most people wouldn't be using these GPUs for 1080p, but I still think it's interesting to test out the resolution scaling, and like I said, some people would actually use these at 1080p. They're just the minority. Let's jump into Unreal Engine 4, which is, is still an incredibly popular engine, and let's look at one of the most recent graphically demanding games in Unreal Engine 4. This is the Callisto Protocol. Now, this is the 1440p Ultra settings, and we can see that throughout this built-in benchmark run, uh, the, the frame rates are all over the place. Uh, there's some demanding scenes, there's some scenes that can even become a little bit CPU limited if you watch the GPU utilization drop a bit. Um, but overall, the 4070 Ti is 9% faster than the 3090 here at 1440p, so that's a bit more than what we saw in Unreal Engine 5 or in A Plague Tale Requiem. So I thought that's at least interesting to note, and both of them are delivering good overall results at 1440p. If we jump up to 4K Ultra, the 4070 Ti is still delivering better performance um, at 105%, so a 5% lead over the 3090, but it's not as, you know, you know, it, it's still falling back compared to the 1440p result, I guess is what I should say, since it had a 9% lead at 1440p. So we're still seeing that uh, kind of consistent trend. Now, again, for overall frame rates are up and down all over the place throughout this benchmark run. The average does come out over 60 FPS for both of them. Uh, by the end of the run, it's just kind of... Like I said, this this game and, and this benchmark run of this game, <laughs> the frame rates are all over the place. Now, we can, once again, look at it at 1080p. I was curious if we would see the performance scale differently here, but we're only seeing an 8% lead. Why is it not better than the 1440p results? Well, I think one possible explanation is if you watch the GPU utilization percentage, that we can see them drop below, pretty significantly below 100% at times, like even down into the 80s, that kind of thing. In other words, at this low of a resolution, the game is getting CPU limited. So if the CPU is the limit at times, that doesn't allow the 4070 Ti to you know, stretch its lead over the 3090 if they're both CPU limited to the frame rate that the CPU maxes out at. It still has a lead because it's not always CPU limited, but that's why we didn't see it go further. Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 is not a new game anymore. It's a little over two years old now, but it's still one of the most demanding games um, out there, especially once you turn on ray tracing. But I thought before we turn on ray tracing, let's just try it out at the ultra preset without ray tracing. And at 1440p, both GPUs are delivering excellent results. 
although the 4070 Ti is a little bit faster. We're seeing a 5% lead by the end of the benchmark run, but both of them are averaging over 100 FPS uh, for the actual benchmark run overall, and even the 1% lows up in the 80s. So obviously both of these GPUs are more than good enough uh, for 1440p ultra settings in this game, uh, which does the beg the question about, well, how about the ray tracing? But before we look at ray tracing, I'm once again curious what happens with the resolution scaling results um, if we take a look at different resolutions. So 1440p Ultra, they're both doing great. 4070 Ti has a 5% lead. At 4K Ultra, we're actually seeing the 4070 Ti drop down to only offering 98% of the performance of the 3090. So the 3090 pulls ever so slightly ahead at 4K. Also notice that neither GPU is able to deliver a 60 FPS experience. During this more demanding bar scene area, they're both down in the 40s. And this is just what's true about the 3000 series of GPUs is that none of them, not even a 3090 Ti, could actually deliver a 60 FPS average at stock settings at 4K Ultra. Um, by the way, this also gives us another chance to kind of slow down and talk about some things. Uh, one thing we could talk about is the power draw. Notice that the 4070 Ti uh, is only reporting usually around, you know, 270-ish watts of power usage, whereas the 3090 is usually up closer to 340, 350 watts of power usage. So while they're delivering extremely similar performance, the energy efficiency of the 4070 Ti is actually significantly better than what we're seeing on the 3090. Now, before we start trying out ray tracing, I thought we'd take a look at what if you did want to play Cyberpunk at 4K using these GPUs? Obviously, you don't have to play at the ultra settings. Uh, if you turn down to the high settings, it helps get you closer to 60 FPS, but if you also use DLSS quality, um, it really pushes you to where I think most people would want to be in a first person shooter type of game, even in single player which is averages that are well over 80 and even pushing near 90 for the 4070 Ti. Um, so much, much better overall. We're seeing the 4070 Ti at these settings with a 3% lead over the 3090 because again, even though this is 4K, this is 4K DLSS quality. So it's actually rendering the game at 1440p and then upscaling to output an image that looks like 4K, although not quite as good. I noticed like the palm tree branches and some lines in the pavement and things like that don't, don't look as good as native uh, using DLSS in this game. But overall, you get a huge frame rate boost. So they're both performing well at 4K now um, and just it's always worth tweaking the settings. But now let's dive into a bunch of ray tracing. I love using this game as a ray tracing benchmark because it has so many different ray tracing settings. Let's look at this at 1440p first. So first let's look at the RT Ultra preset and let's look at it at native and using DLSS because at native resolution, the 4070 Ti has a 9% lead, but both of them are only in the mid 40 FPS range going through this uh, demanding bar scene area. Whereas if you kick on DLSS quality to again, render below 1440p and output an image that looks pretty close to the 1440p image, uh, you now see that the 3090 and 4070 Ti are delivering over 70 or 80 FPS respectively. And the 4070 Ti's lead increases to a 13% lead over the 3090, uh, which I think is actually a little bit more significant. Like it's 1% lows are around 70 versus around 60. Uh, it's fairly noticeable. So we can see that not only does it have a good um, a good lead here, the DLSS again seems to accelerate that since it performs better at the lower resolutions. However, I do want to mention that um, you know there's a lot of different ray tracing options available. Whereas the where the RT Ultra settings uses uh, the ray traced reflections as well as local shadows, sun shadows, and the RT lighting at the ultra setting you could just enable reflections, which are very impactful to the image in this game. And if you do that, the 4070 Ti has an 8% lead, but both GPUs are delivering over 60 FPS uh, experience, which is really nice. So you can play at the native resolution if you don't like how DLSS looks and still get the ultra settings plus RT reflections and a good frame rate. Um, alternatively, you could try out the RT medium settings. These don't use the reflections, but they do turn on the local shadows, sun shadows, 
and the RT lighting, but only to the medium setting. And some people would prefer the look of that. And the problem is it's a little more demanding than just using the reflections. And we see the GPOs uh, averaging in the 50s rather than uh, up over 60, with the 4070 Ti with a 7% lead over the 30, uh, 3090. But that is showing that you can get decent performance at native 1440p if you're not maxing all of the ray tracing settings. However, what if you wanted to use some ray tracing at 4K? Well, we already saw that um, even 4K Ultra with no ray tracing was actually too much for both of these GPUs to deliver uh, an experience that most people would want. If you try taking the Ultra settings and then turning on um, just ray traced reflections, it crushes it even further to where they're both in the 30 FPS range a lot of the time. But if you turn on DLSS quality, you get a massive bump in performance for both of them. Um, and we actually see them both delivering over 60 FPS if you just enable DLSS quality. So if you use the ultra settings plus RT reflections and DLSS quality, I think you get a pretty good result here. With those settings, the 4070 Ti is 6% faster than the 3090, whereas at native, it's only 3% faster. Uh, by the way, a, a, an interesting side note, I actually see that you get a better boost here using RT reflections plus DLSS quality than just RT ultra with no uh, RT reflections with DLSS quality. And I wonder if that's the, the ray traced reflections scale better to the lower resolutions than the uh, ray tracing does, but that's a whole other note. Anyway, um, the let's take a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now, first we'll try it at the 4K extreme settings just to tax the GPUs as much as possible. And this might also be representative of what you would do if maybe you were playing like, um, you know, the campaign, something like that. Although this benchmark run does go through the... Uh, through one of the multiplayer maps. We can see that both GPUs are delivering uh, well over 60 FPS. You know, the, the 3090 is kind of in the mid 70s, but the 4070 Ti is in the mid 80s. There's definitely a difference here. And the 4070 Ti has an 11% lead at 4K. This is one of the best 4K advantages we've seen. Remember in Unreal Engine 5, uh, we saw the 4070 Ti just tied at 4K, and at the um, you know 4K Ultra settings in Cyberpunk, we actually saw the 4070 Ti slightly slower than the 3090. So that was giving us a hint that the 4070 Ti is a bit faster than the 3090 in this engine compared to our typical results that we saw. And by going down to 1440p, and I'm also turning down from the extreme settings to the balance settings, because I think this is more typical of what someone would actually use when playing multiplayer competitively. Uh, we're now seeing the 4070 Ti with a 21% advantage over the 3090. Um, now, both GPUs are delivering excellent frame rates, um, you know, with the 3090 up over 150 much of the time and the 4070 Ti up over 180 much of the time. Uh, but I still thought it was interesting that the 4070 Ti does better in this game than it does in other games, especially since this is a game where we've noticed that AMD GPUs outperform the, their NVIDIA counterparts compared to what's typical. So something about this game engine f must favor something about um, the 4000 series architecture and AMD architecture for that matter uh, compared to the 3000 series. I decided to try out going down to the 1080p balance settings here just because I know for competitive players um, you might actually be buying extremely high-end GPUs like this to play at reduced settings 1080p in order to get high frame rates. Just be aware that as we're at 1080p with reduced settings, the CPU and RAM limitations of the system do start to factor in more than they do at the high resolutions and settings. And that's just something to be aware of as a competitive gamer. If you're playing at low resolutions and turning down settings, your CPU and RAM becomes much more important than it does for people who are playing at high resolutions and graphic settings. Anyway, we are seeing the 4070 Ti increase its lead to 25% over the 3090, so it is interesting to see that result. Now, if I was going to speculate about what's going on here, I do think the 4000 series has, uh, especially the 4070 Ti, has less you know, memory bandwidth, but an increased memory cache. So perhaps this game uh, likes the memory cache. Uh, and also, maybe the uh, Forza Horizon 5 also likes increased cash because we're seeing a 21% lead over the 3090 in this game, even at um, you know 4K extreme settings. 
which I thought was once again very interesting because like I said in Unreal Engine 5 and in Plague Tale Requiem at 4K the 4070 Ti is basically tying the results right even in Cyberpunk basically tying uh, at the 4K and here we're at 21% lead. Now this is another game where AMD's 6000 series GPUs performed well relative to Nvidia. Um, you know, when I was looking at benchmarks of the last gen, and again, I think they have that infinity cache. So I'm wondering if this is a game that responds well to that type of cache. And I, like I said, I think the 4000 series from Nvidia does have larger cache than its 3000 series did. So I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating on why this is happening, but hey, it's happening. Now, if we drop down to 1440p, we're seeing a, um, we're seeing another lead, a good lead here for the 4070 Ti. Now, once again, though, actually, if you look at the GPU utilization on the 4070 Ti here, uh, we're actually seeing it drop a bit below 100% at times, showing some limitations from the CPU and RAM situation, in other words, from the rest of the platform. And you can also see its energy consumption drop when that happens. Um, so even though it still has a, a lead here, it probably could have had a larger lead if there wasn't any limitation coming from the rest of the system, which is interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and te test out DirectX 11. I'm using God of War for the DirectX 11 test because it's one of the most recent and you know nice looking and you know popular DirectX 11 games. And um, here we're actually seeing the 4070 Ti only giving us 96% of the performance of the 3090. So at 4K Ultra, it's back to the 3090 scaling better and the 4070 Ti having the loss here. So I wouldn't say this is so much that DX11 seems to perform weird, uh, other, you know, considering that this isn't too far out of line from what we saw in Cyberpunk, for example, using DX12, where the 4070 Ti gave us 98% of the performance of the 3090. So not too crazy or anything. Also, both of the GPUs are giving us good performance here. In this scene, uh, where he's, I actually have control of the character, it's 77 average, you know, versus 80-ish performance-wise and averages 88 versus 84, although um, this little cutscene I'm using, you know, averages higher than the, most of the actual gameplay. But this is an easy way for me to get side-by-side -side benchmark results. Anyway, um, if we drop down to 1440p ultra settings, we actually still see the 3090 ahead, although now it's basically a tie. The 4070 Ti is giving us 99% of the performance of the 3090 at this resolution. So this is one of the weird results where in the sense that the 3090 is winning at 1440p, which is unusual, although it's this game is performing like normal in the sense that the 4070 Ti versus the 3090 is better for the 4070 Ti at 1440p relative to 4K. In other words, it closed some of the gap that we saw there. Um, but anyway, let's jump over to another graphics API with Vulkan. So we're using Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, for the Vulkan testing, and we're seeing the 4070 Ti with a 4% lead at the 4K, I'm calling it the Favor Quality Max. So basically if you take the pre graphics preset slider and slide it all the way to the right, the Favor Quality setting, that's what I did here for the graphics settings. Both of them performing well in the upper mid 70s to even the 80s range at times. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not showing you the average and 1% lows here because as I, this benchmark run has load screens in it. Um, so I'm just doing it off of these end of the benchmark run results. I used the average there to compute the 4% lead. So that's where I got that from rather than from my own um, Reva Tuner statistics server uh, results. Now, Horizon Zero Dawn, just to throw in some more games here, I saw an interesting result where at 4K Ultimate, we're actually seeing the 4070 Ti at only 93% of the performance of the 3090, which again is a bit of an outlier. Again, it's normal for the 3090 to, you know, uh, you know, increase its, uh, you, know, you know, its relative performance versus the 4070 Ti at 4K, but it was unusual to see the 4070 Ti at only 93% of the performance of the 3090. I think this is the worst loss for the 4070 Ti we've seen uh, throughout all of these benchmark runs. So that was interesting. And at these settings, we shouldn't be seeing any real CPU limits or anything like that. The GPUs are 100% utilized. Now, by dropping down to 1440p ultimate, we now see the 4070 Ti with a 2% lead. So this game's only unusual in the sense that the 4070 Ti fell that far behind at 4K, but it's normal in the sense that um, when you compare 1440p versus 4K, the 4070 Ti 
is better relatively to the 3090 at 1440p than it is at 4K. Although this is one of our worst 1440p results with the 4070 Ti only having a 2% lead at 1440p. But again, when we saw it losing with only 93% of the performance of the 3090 at 4K, uh, then you know that's actually a pretty good gain relatively by dropping to 1440p. Let's take a look at Tomb Raider uh, just for fun before we go here. At 4K highest, highest is just the name of the preset. It actually doesn't have the ray tracing enabled. Uh, we see basically a tie with the 4070 Ti with a 1% lead over the 3090. And if that doesn't match up to what you're seeing on the screen here, this is a much longer benchmark run. I'm just not gonna show you all the sections of the benchmark. And again, it has load screens, so I'm not showing you the averages and 1% lows because I turned those off because I didn't want them to get messed up by the um, load screen results. Instead, I'm using the average results as reported by this benchmark itself, which I'll show you right here. Anyway, let's pop out and give some final thoughts on all these results. So if you had them both available for about the same price, which one would you pick? And I do have them both here. I'm actually showing them here because I've been getting every now and then random comments. I do try to read all my comments uh, of people saying like the benchmarks, like the ones I do showing the side-by-sides are always like, it can't possibly be real. Like how can you show Fortnite if it's the same footage when it's a multiplayer game? Guys, I'm using the replay features. I do really have these GPUs. Some I saw a few random comments like, oh, you can't, can't be real, can't be. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe there are some fake benchmark channels out there. I don't know. But I do really have the cards. I actually got sent to those by NVIDIA. I get review samples. Anyway, uh, with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about this. If you had them both available for the same price, which one would you pick? I would absolutely take the 4070 Ti for gaming. It's only real downside. And I was like, is there any reason you would pick the 3090? Well, if the 3090 was available significantly cheaper, they offer similar performance. So then you might take the 3090. Um, but that's just not what I'm seeing right now. And then if, uh, if you need it for a professional workload where the double the VRAM capacity on the 3090 is useful for your professional workload, then I think I would take the 3090 over the 4070 Ti. However, for gaming, I do not think the 4070 Ti is going to be, um, significantly handicapped by the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It would have been nice to have more, don't get me wrong, but I don't think in any of our tests we saw VRAM becoming an issue. And as games get more demanding to where they might actually use more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I think it's likely that what would be happening is you'd have to reduce the settings or upscale anyway on the 4070 Ti just from a performance perspective, which then brings the VRAM you know, usage back under control. Now, maybe you have some kind of use case that I don't really test, like VR or heavily modded games or something like that, and maybe you know more about the VRAM capacity needs for that application than I do, but in just the normal games um, out of the box like I tested, um, I really think the 4070 Ti is offering you very similar performance. When one GPU was better than the other, they were often basically tied. The 4070 Ti had more wins than it did losses, even if they were small differences. And occasionally, like in Call of Duty, it was a more noticeable difference. And then the other thing is the 4070 Ti is delivering this performance uh, for significantly less energy usage, which is really nice. It'll take up less space in your case, most likely, all of that. Um, if you're curious about the models I compared here, by the way, it is the um, Asus Tough. Uh, a gaming uh, OC version, that I, not the non-OC version um, that you see listed here. So it's the $850 uh, model that I was testing here. I was testing it as out of the box setting. So it does have a very small factory overclock, but that's not significantly different than what you'd see on a, on a non-OC card. And I was testing out the Founders Edition of the RTX 3090. So yes, a custom cooled version might do a little bit better and overclocking and all of that. Um, now, some of you guys are like, this guy's just an NVIDIA shill trying to show that the 4070 Ti uh, is good value because it's better than a 3090, but the 3090 was bad value to begin with. So let me just address that and say, guys, I've already tested the 4070 Ti against better value GPUs like the 3080. So if you want to watch that comparison, I've also done the 3070 Ti versus the 4070 Ti. I've done all sorts of comparisons, the 4070 Ti up against a 7900 XT. 
So we've visited the value proposition versus other GPUs that are better value than a 3090 already. I'm just doing follow-up content because like I said, I've actually seen comments on my channel wanting people's feedback or even just confidently saying, I can buy a used 3090 for that price, so why would I buy the 4070 Ti? And I'm hoping this video showed you that if you're actually considering that exact transaction, unless you need that more VRAM for a professional use case or you're just absolutely confident your games need it, I would rather have a new GPU that is more energy efficient um, and has slightly better performance on average, especially at lower than 4K resolutions. And I really will end with that. Um, is the 4070 Ti good enough performance for you? I think we're seeing that it's a very good 1440p GPU and it's a respectable 4K GPU, but in the more demanding games, um, you're definitely gonna have to turn down settings or upscale or both to reach frame rates that you'd be happy with at 4K. But like I said, I think that then helps control the VRAM utilization as well. Um, anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. I hope this video was useful for you and I hope all of you have an excellent day.